I'm going to do some tomato juice today. I have roughly three kilos of tomatoes. And we're going to turn this into juice. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop a couple and get them on cooking straight away as hot as I can and then I'm going to keep chopping and adding while they're heating then. So I'll get them in the pan as soon as the chopping as possible. So as you can tell for this recipe, I haven't bothered peeling the tomatoes. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run them through a food mill in a minute, which some of you will know has been sitting in the back of my car for a little while. So I've run that for five minutes boiling after I finished adding the last of the tomatoes. And now we're going to run it through the mill. Now here are all the attachments for this is the food mincer grinder machine that I picked up from Lidl. Um, it's not very expensive and we'll see. I couldn't find a tomato strainer attachment for my, my mincer so I ended up getting a new one anyway. So we're going to discard the ones we don't need. So we've got sausage and biscuit attachments there. So we'll get those out of the way. Now what we're gonna So this is almost certainly going to take more than one of these, but we'll see. Let's move that back a little bit. There we go. This is not the day to be wearing white dress, is it? And our tomatoes. So. Well, it works. Okay. So let's put our first ladleful in and see how we go. Just knocked the camera there, do apologise. It's got some little bayonet fittings on this piece. So we should put that on and that should go like the clappers now. Let's see, shall we? So, these I'm going to put away. I will get them in the dehydrator when I finish dealing with these. Normally I put it in first, but there's something in there at the moment, so they're going to have to wait a minute. Now we have, from just over three kilos of tomatoes, roughly three litres. These are one and a half litres each tomato juice. Ta-da! How magic is that? Now, some of you will remember my Passata debacle of last year. This machine I've hesitated to buy. I didn't get one last year because 
I already had a mincer and I thought I could just find an attachment for it, but that proved to be relatively impossible. You can see it's a little gunky around there, but I'll give that a wipe down. But it just goes to show the right tools for the job are sometimes worth doing. That I swore I would never make Passata again. However, with this little doodad, as long as it lasts. Very, very helpful machine. This is so much easier than the other years I've done this. A complete game changer for me. So I'm gonna keep this, definitely. So what I'm gonna do is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these back into the pan, heating back up to get my jazz. If I haven't told you before, I absolutely love these Pyrex things. No, I'm not being paid for anything. <laughs> no, this isn't an advert, but I absolutely love these things. They're so tactile. Easy to wash, practical to use. They're just no frills. I love them. So we're going to have a little competition today with our tomato juice. I've got the water bath on and I've got a pressure canner on and we're going to see the results from each process and if they differ at all. So just before we put the lids on there we're going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now rings around, clips on, and I'm going to stick one of these in the water bath, and I'm going to stick the other two in the pressure canner, and we're going to have a look afterwards. So I'm just going to get this one into the water bath now. But before I do that, straighten those clips. There we go. Those on nice and firmly. I'm going to get these two in the pressure canner. Obviously the times differ so the tomato juice in the pressure canner is going to go at five pounds of pressure not ten. Then we're going to process that for 20 minutes. The In the water bath we are going to process that once it started boiling. We're going to process that for 40 minutes. So I've just topped up my water bath and got the lid on to start the vent on the pressure canner. And I will see you on the other side. So I'm not going to run through the entire process this time. If you want to see either the water bath process or the pressure canning process in action, please check out a couple of my other videos. I'll put some links in to show you those processes in more detail. So here are our tomato skins that the fantastic machine removed. I'm going to lay these out. On here for some seasoning later on. Now, as opposed to the last ones, these have been slightly cooked, so they're probably going to come out a little differently. They'll be a little shinier, maybe a little more gummy and less papery. But as long as we spread them out well, that shouldn't be a problem. So while those are processing, we're going to get these tomato skins into the dehydrator. Right, so we've just had the last 10 minute wait on the pressure canner. I'm going to pull our jars out. So first I'm going to pull out the water bath jar. It's 
that one. Okay, and now I'm gonna grab the two pressure canned jars. One. Two. Now, the first thing I've noticed is that actually these two processes took roughly the same amount of time. However, I was only water bathing one jar. So, obviously there wasn't quite enough water of as if I was doing a whole load. Um, the other thing I noticed is that, as you can see, these two are, bu two are bubbling away nicely out of the pressure canner. This one isn't. Um, it's also a lot of the solids in the juice have risen and are floating, which hasn't happened in these two. So you can see it's separated off. Um, I'll get a good picture for you in a second just to see the differences. So this one is the water bath jar. These two were the pressure canned jars. I'll get a good side shot and then we'll check on them tomorrow when they've had their 24 hours to sit. Okay, so we're gonna look at our tomato jars today. So these two were pressure canned yesterday and this one here was water bathed. So let's have a quick look. Taking a snapshot from the side and as you can see in the picture, the water bath jar has got a lot more air bubbles in the actual mixture than the other two. The other two are very calm. Um, I'll pick them up so you can have a good look in just a second. Here. So this is the water bathed jar. As you can see there's a lot more kind of solid material that's massed in the middle. This was floating yesterday. This had separated completely during the processing and was floating and it seems to have settled down. It was mixed in a lot better. Most of those seeds are actually because I poured it back into the pot again without removing some of the seeds. Um, this is that one. These two, as you can see, all three have sealed nicely. So here is the pressure canned one. As you can tell, there are less air bubbles in the mixture generally. It looks a lot smoother um, and a bit more combined. It hasn't separated out as much on that one. This one obviously got a bit less of the solids in it. It's a little bit more liquidy. And there's a bit too much headspace in this one, really, but I ran out of juice. So, as far as looks go, there's not that much to tell. Let's do something ridiculous and turn them on the sides there. Okay, so these are the two that were pressure canned. As you can see, this one does have more of the solids in, as opposed to this one. That's just the way I poured it out of the pan. And this one, this is the water bathed one. As you can tell, it's a little more foamy, there's a little more air trapped in the mixture than there is in these ones. Um, but it's still sealed nicely. So there's a difference as far as any difference in taste goes. I can't tell you right now. Uh, I will try and make a note and maybe add that onto this video at a later date if I get the chance. So that is the minimal difference in processing in this particular jaunt between water bathed and pressure canned tomato juice. So this is a couple of days after the last video. As you can see, the two that were pressure canned have settled a bit now. There's a little bit of separation coming on, this one that was water bathed has actually come together a lot more. I just thought that might be interesting. 
some people to see.